Now, innovation markets and innovation contests are powerful, but there are other approaches which also can use the digital space to open up the field of opportunity for innovation. And one of them works with open source communities. Now, the idea of communities of practice, people who share common interests, who work together to try and solve common problems, to innovate together, is a very old established one. But as with our previous examples, digital technology enables a massive expansion of this. We can see it in a number of spaces. If we look at our smartphone, basically it's running on software called Linux. That little penguin on the right hand side is the symbol of Linux. Linux, however, is not a large corporation. It's a community, an open source community of programmers who for decades have written and shared and improved, innovated around software. The same is true with Firefox as a browser. That's one of the many things that comes from Mozilla, which is again an open source community of programmers. Local Motors is a community which is basically built around a common interest in cars car hobbyists who want to design and build cars and make them work better in all sorts of different ways. Now, Local Motors exists in both physical form, but also as an online open source community. And they've done a number of things, including producing many cars, including the world's first 3D printed car. But the interesting thing about Local Motors is not just it's an interesting community in itself. It's a community that the other major manufacturers also look at. Rather than seeing them as trivial competitors, companies like Daimler or General Motors see local motors as a laboratory, a place where there might be very different ideas coming from different directions, essentially extending the range of their own innovation search. And that's something that Lego has mastered over the last decade. Lego introduced a project back in the early part of the 21st century called Mindstorms. Mindstorms essentially brought programmability to its Lego bricks. But with very, very little time, this product was hacked. Now, Lego had a choice back then. It could have tried to identify the hackers and prosecute them, or, as it did, it could say, hmm, there are people out there who are working on stuff that we haven't thought about. Maybe we should find a way to bring them in to our community. And Lego invited some of the key hackers the result was that the second generation of Mindstorms was a runaway success. And it taught Lego a lot of lessons about working with wider communities. And part of what it does today is online offer a number of spaces where communities can contribute their own ideas. Children can come up with new ideas for toys, for gadgets, or in this particular case, uh, an application based on a TV series. But essentially what happens with the LEGO community is that users display their ideas and other users across the community can comment on them, just like in Facebook. They can like them, they can add suggestions. LEGO monitor this and when they find tens of thousands of likes and a community of interest around a particular design, that's a good signal it might be worth making it. But in fairness, LEGO don't simply steal the ideas, they partner up with whoever contributed them and they co-create the product. Now this kind of thing happens not just in the commercial space, it also goes on in the social innovation space. Two more examples. Field Ready is a group of engineers who work in the wake of humanitarian disasters. When there's an earthquake or a tidal wave or some man-made disaster, Field Ready move in very quickly to try and help. And in particular, what they're trying to do is bring 3D printing 3D printing to print badly needed spare parts or print versions of a desperately needed piece of hospital equipment or a pump that's broken and provides clean water. The problem for Field Ready, of course, isn't just the 3D printers, it's the design information that drives them. And whilst 3D have some engineers, they certainly don't have the design capability to meet all the different situations they're going to encounter. They deal with this challenge by mobilizing an army of volunteer programmers, volunteer designers who operate across the internet, an open source community. Field Ready display a photo of what's needed and this open source community gets to work writing design files. And patient innovation, the last example on the right hand side, essentially another idea which mobilizes a community. Sadly, many people suffer from chronic diseases. 
things which take time, they may have to live with these diseases for a long time, and they're often very debilitating. So they and their carers very often innovate, essentially innovating not to make money, but to make their lives easier. And the principle behind patient innovation is captured in their slogan. What if we could find a way of sharing those solutions, of building a community, an open source community, and sharing improving innovations that might make a number of different people's lives better? Now, innovation communities are powerful, just as we saw innovation markets and contests can be. But we need, once again, to be careful in how we use these tools. Essentially, they're built upon common user interests and frustrations. That's what's behind the open source movement. And part of that approach is what's called free revealing. It's essentially built on people being willing and happy to share and to challenge in constructive ways. The danger, of course, is that that lays themselves open to free riding. People coming in to basically take without giving anything back. But these communities aren't stupid and they evolve a set of underlying rules which enable them to police this. People have to give to get. It's a potentially very rich resource for organisations wanting to enter the new innovation space. For example, the idea of netnography. It's essentially rather like an anthropologist going to the Amazon jungle and studying an obscure tribe, trying to understand what makes it work. Netnographers dig into user communities and find many different insights. What are these people talking about? What are they worried about? What are the emerging trends? They also tap into a huge range of hidden tacit knowledge, which can help shape the innovations they're going to develop. And this has value not just in the front end of innovation, bringing in new ideas for new products or services, but it's also about the downstream compatibility. By working with users, by tapping deeply into the knowledge held by those communities and being shared by them, it means that the innovations that emerge might well fit better and diffuse more rapidly. But the challenge in working with innovation communities as part of an open innovation strategy is finding win-win ways to partner with them rather than exploiting those communities. So, connect and develop, bridge across these two very different worlds, and you enable the possibility for a completely new product category. Now, these are all examples of something we've been seeing throughout this film. What we can do with some powerful new tools, but built on old principles, which allow us to connect, to expand into innovation markets, to use innovation contests, essentially to mobilize many ideas, many minds to crowdsource innovation.